I am cheap. I don't like to spend money. Perfect tool. I've built a dining table, coffee table, headboards, console table, end table, cabinet. I can do so many things with such few tools. I promise you, you don't need that many tools to get started. There is a big misconception that you need lots of tools to get started with DIY, but that's not true. Now, while these are some of the tools that I've used through the years to do so many projects, you don't need a lot to get started. One of the most common questions that I get is what tools to use as a beginner starting with DIY. And so I figured I would answer this question because I think it's a lot less than you think. And there's so many different hacks and ways that you can get around buying new tools that can make it so that you can do so many different projects. These are essentially the tools that I had the first over a year that I did any DIY projects and I did lots. If you wanna tackle things that are a little bit more complicated, there are tools for that and I'm gonna cover all of that in this video. Oh, and just so you know, using power tools, using advanced tools, they're not that overwhelming. So you got this. So first I wanted to tell you about some of the tools that if I myself was a beginner once again, that I would say, okay, buy these products. They're going to help you along the way and make DIY super easy and allow you to do quite a few projects. Have to get it out of the way, but obviously some basics, tape measure, screwdriver set, hammer, you need them, what can I say? One thing I didn't start out with, but I should have, safety glasses. So affordable and protects your eyes. A lot of things with DIYs can be dangerous for that. And also a respirator. And I say this because this I didn't do for over two years and I, I inhaled so much fumes for absolutely no reason. There's way too many DIYers on the internet these days on social media, on every platform, not using proper protection. Everything from stains to different types of paints to glues have fumes that are very, very toxic. So protect your health. This was one of the first tools that I bought online. It is a wire stripper slash plier slash wire cutter. I've used this a million times over to cut dowels, pry things open, to apply items. It has been incredibly helpful. I've used this for, I think the past six years. So before I even started professionally with DIY. A box cutter is super handy to do many, many, many things. I use it all the time, not only to cut out shapes for things, to score tiles, to cut boxes, but also to get in little nooks and crannies to apply spackling. This one is from DeWalt. It's very good quality. I previously used to buy the ones from the dollar store, not as good quality, just so you know. I am cheap. I don't like to spend money, but this is definitely one thing. It's worth the money to spend a little bit more. This is a putty knife. This is really good if you're ever working with spackling for the wall, texture onto things, apply wood fill. This has been so handy so many different times. I got this years ago. I only have one and it was a good quality one and it's lasted. One of my very first tools, a hot glue gun. Why? Because this is good for crafts and it's also good for some intermediate DIYs, I'd say, because you can use hot glue that is just for crafts. That's the stuff you go to the dollar store, but you can also use hot glue that is much more heavy duty, like Gorilla Glue. That is so much stickier and so so much more heavy duty and you can use that all with this to, to apply adhesive in a way that's really good because it dries really fast. A simple staple gun, do you know how handy this is? I've used this for upholstery, not only to do my bed frame and my headboard, but also to reupholster chairs, stools. I've also used it to attach paneling to furniture pieces and it's just unbelievably handy. This is very, very inexpensive. There is no power tool factor to this. And this is one of my first tools, definitely a beginner tool and very, very handy regardless. And finally, a sander is actually one of the first tools that I've used, but I am going to say actually sandpaper is really, really beginner friendly. Why? These are just the ones that I actually have for my electric sander, but a lot of times I'm sanding by hand. And this is partially just because I don't have an outdoor space, especially with doing things indoors. It's very localized mess and so you you can just do it by hand. And fun fact, I got my sander when I was in my last apartment and I was just starting with bigger projects, like bigger furniture pieces and stuff like that. And I have not used the sander once in the last year. And meanwhile, since I've been here, I've built a dining table, a coffee table, wood paneling, all sorts of stuff I've built, but sanding is one of the things I've not really done much of. So this has been very helpful. Now, if there's one thing that you've noticed, none of those are really power tools because you don't really need very many power tools except for a drill. Now, for the first two years that I did DIY, I used a corded drill that I had purchased for like $35, great investment, but I left it in Toronto. Then I came here and I started using my dad's drill from the 80s, okay? So that just says you don't need anything really special. However, recently I did upgrade to some cordless drills. 
why do I have three cordless drills now? So to be honest, I went to the store and I literally saw a good deal for the Ryobi drill set. That's these two. It's a drill and a driver set. And I got it because I thought, you know what? It's on a good deal. Plus eventually, Parth and I do projects together. It would be really helpful for us both to be able to work kind of at the same time. A drill drills holes. A driver is for driving in screws. Now I will say, then I worked on a collaboration with Cobalt, which is Lowe's brand, and the quality difference is definitely there. This one is much stronger and I think like the voltage is different. This is 18 volts, this is 24 volts. They're completely different. So what would I prefer to use as someone who's like actively doing DIY? this one probably in this instance, but could a set like this or just one of these totally work as an entry level DIYer? Absolutely. Could a corded one work as a beginner? 100%, 30, $35, that's really all you need. And regarding the drill, you can just get an affordable drill that's corded. If you just are starting out, you don't need anything too fancy. You probably don't need something that's cordless. As I mentioned, the first three years of doing projects day in, day out, I did not have a cordless drill. Okay, so obviously as you're doing DIYs, you're going to want to cut stuff out, especially wood, MDF panels, and all sorts of stuff like that. In terms of that, you will probably think you need multiple saws, and understanding which type of saw to get is very complicated, I think, for beginners. At least for me, it really was. I do want to mention that most types of wood that you get from the hardware store like Home Depot can actually be cut at Home Depot. So you can go in with your little list of measurements, pick up your products, take it to the back saw section and ask them to cut it to your measurements. And they will usually do a pretty good job. There's one saw for cutting general lumber. And then there's another saw for big paneling like plywood or MDF panels. Now, obviously sometimes you're going to want to cut it at home or you want to cut out specific shapes that are not just straight cuts. That is where this tool comes into play. This is a jigsaw. And again, this was my first jigsaw I ever bought. And my only jigsaw I own. It is by the company Skill and I got it off of Amazon. I will link everything below. By the way, anything that I can find online, I will link below. And I realized this is a super affordable saw that allows you to do most types of cut. So I use it for my dining table. I've used it to cut down lumber when I need to, if I need to do it at home, to trim down MDF paneling and plywood and all sorts of stuff like that. It's great for shapes. The trick for this type of tool is to definitely get the right type of blades for it. So you can go to Home Depot and you can buy a pack of blades that has fine tip blades for cutting out softwoods. You can get ones that are more rough cut blades. So definitely just go and pick out a set for that. And then if you're doing detail work, the fine tooth blade, which means it has lots and lots of jagged tips to cut things super finely. To me, this is one of the best beginner friendly saws just because it's so easy to use. It's so affordable and you can use it for so many different things. And by the way, I didn't include them here, but wear earplugs while you're using these types of loud equipment and also make sure that you're wearing eye protection as well. Now on the topic of saws, I do actually have a miter saw. And before this saw, I did have a Ryobi miter saw, which I left in Toronto. I would say it's nice to have one at home if you have a lot of angled cuts, like I did with my DIY canvas frame, or if you're trying to do angled legs for anything, then a miter saw would be super helpful to have at home. But otherwise, if you're just planning to do a lot of basic straight cuts, you can can just take it to Home Depot and get them to cut the wood to size for you. That also saves you the mess at home. It's super easy. It's not always the most precise cuts, but it's it's honestly good enough. I've done it for so many different things so far. It's definitely one of the biggest hacks ever. Now, if you want to do the angled cuts and you don't want to invest in an electric miter saw, this could be your friend. This is a nice little miter box and all of these little slots are angled, meaning that you can cut things at different degree angles, which makes it really, really good if you have more detailed finishing work that you're doing. I noticed this is pretty good if you don't have a ton of cuts and if the pieces that you're trying to cut are made out of MDF, which is basically like particles glued together as opposed to solid wood. I have tried to cut solid wood in here. It's not that fun. Pine wood, you could because it's a soft wood, but anything that's hardwood, not a fun experience. But I do think this is excellent for little pieces of trim. I know that wainscoting and stuff like that has been really popular recently. You could just use this to cut the pieces. It would definitely take you longer than using an electric miter saw, which just takes one second. This will take you maybe a couple minutes per piece, but if you don't want to spend a lot of money or you don't have the space to store the saw, that was definitely a big concern that I had for a while. This 
could do you well. So here are three of my favorite tools. If you're gluing things and you're building furniture, you definitely are gonna need some clamps. This came in a pack of four, two big ones like this and two small ones. They were very affordable and they basically work to clamp together things that you're gluing. And do they work well? Yes, they do. Are they the most efficient, most effective ones that are the easiest to use? No, because those are more expensive. I don't even have those good ones. I have these ones and they've been working so well for me so far. So do I recommend these? 100%. I got these in my last apartment and I've used them countless times. And I actually think as you're moving into projects of more substance, like if you're not doing a lot of crafty things, but you're doing bigger, bigger projects, you're going to need some clamps. This little guy is a square, literally to be able to draw 45 degree angles and straight edges that you know are square. I only got this and oh my God, I wish I had had this from the beginning. This would have been so helpful for me. The amount of times I would spend like measuring one side of a piece of wood and then measuring measuring the other side and then drawing a line connecting it to make sure that I have a straight line. I've done that too many times, it's insane. This would have saved me so much time. So I definitely recommend this. This was maybe like 10-ish dollars and a key tool, honestly. Perfect tool. My beloved pocket hole jig. Oh my gosh, the number of times I have used this. I've used this to build my coffee table, my dining table, my bed frame, my headboard. This has been a game changer for me. This is basically the tool that allows you to make pocket holes when joining pieces of wood. It gives a very professional finish, but most of all, it actually is just really easy to use, especially if you were by yourself trying to build furniture. It is so much more challenging to like drill things with a lot of force from the top, which wouldn't also be very professional professional, but instead you can use these pocket holes. You can maneuver it by yourself. You can assemble everything by yourself. It's a game changer. I love it. This was the in-between kit in terms of price and ease and functionality. So they have a range of these types of jigs. I, because this is my full-time professional job, will probably end up upgrading this, although I am pretty cheap and they are expensive, to be the next one up. So this one is like this. I think the cheapest one is one hole at a time, which also could work, but I think two at a time is better. 100% recommend this. This I wish I knew about this earlier. And I have to thank someone who follows me here, who messaged me on Instagram saying, it's not hard to use. I thought it would be hard, but then I learned it. Don't worry, you just need to try it. And that actually gave me the motivation to try. And that was my first time over a year ago. She was right. Pocket hole jig coming through. It's the best. So this is my insanely dirty sander. I have not used this, I think, since I've been here. I'm amazed. I actually got a DeWalt one. I don't remember that. For reference, DeWalt is like a higher end brand, which I don't usually do that. I usually do not get like the more expensive ones. I think maybe I had a sander before that wasn't very good quality. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get a good quality one. Sander works great. It's great if you're doing big furniture pieces or if you want to buy lower quality lumber for cost purposes and then use the sander to really refine it down and make it super smooth and really nice. Personally for me, I tend to not do that just because of I'm in an apartment building, no real outdoor space. So I don't tend to use my sander very often. However, it definitely has its time and place. If I had a house and a garage or an outdoor space, I would be using this for big furniture pieces all the time, to be honest. It cuts down your time a lot. It makes projects go a lot faster. And I think that, oh, I just dropped a bunch of sawdust. Just cleaning up some casual sawdust here. Okay, we're good with that. So this is a caulking gun and you can basically use this to apply sealant, caulking, adhesives. I love this because it makes it so that you, if you're working on a big project, you can use this and apply a bunch of it at one time. I will have to say this is my second one of these that I purchased. The first one was the cheapest product at Home Depot and it was very cheap quality as well, not a pleasure to use. This was the second level up and in my opinion, still good, but not perfect. It is really exhausting sometimes to apply sealant using these types of guns for your hand it's very exhausting at least for me it is i will probably upgrade this again maybe if i ever move into a house and i'm refinishing bigger things i will probably upgrade this to an even better one but basically to say i did start out with the cheapest one it was fine if you don't want to spend a lot of money you can get the cheapest one or you can go about and try and find one that's better but either way one of these is pretty good especially if you are applying the sealants the caulking the glues the adhesives your alternative will obviously be to buy the squeeze tubes which do work because sometimes the sealants glues caulking, etc. They'll come in smaller containers in a squeeze tube. They're not as good, but they'll work. Otherwise, recommend one of these. This is a little tool for figuring out where to hang things because it'll tell you where there's wood or wires behind the wall. I will say 
I probably should have had this from the beginning because it makes hanging things safer. Otherwise, sometimes you're hanging, so you're nailing into something and you have no idea. Am I actually gonna nail into a wire? Is there actually wood there? This makes it a lot easier, obviously, and so I definitely wish I had this sooner. And then finally, you might end up being in a situation where you wanna nail some things together. You know what I did for the first three years? I used a hammer and a nail and that was just about it. And adhesives, and that will take you a long way. However, if you're looking to do it a little bit faster and more effectively, you might need a brad nailer. Now this is the tool that I use to build my balcony railing. This is also really, really helpful for people who are refinishing furniture or doing wall treatments in your home where you want to nail trim to the wall or nail trim to a furniture piece. I did not have this for the longest time, but I will say it does make your job go much faster much better, much easier. Now this was a tool that I was very intimidated to use. However, I will say, all you have to do is make sure that your hand is nowhere near the tip while you're nailing it. Plus wear your eye protection and wear ear protection. And fun fact, the same goes for when you're working with a drill because tips can break, things can go flying. Make sure you're wearing your protection. That's the one thing I want you to definitely take care of this. And the other thing I want you to take out of this video is just the fact that you really don't need that much to get started. I hope that by sharing the few tools I actually use Used for the first year, the first second year, the first third year of doing DIY, and even where I am, the fourth year of doing DIY, I've built a dining table, a coffee table, two headboards, a wooden console table, a marble end table, a wooden and plaster cabinet for my balcony, and laid floors, and those are pretty much all the tools that I use to do all of those projects. I do DIY projects for a living, and I don't have a workshop. So if I can do so many things with such few tools, I promise you, you don't need that many tools to get started. You just need to start out with a few basics, know some hacks like getting things cut at Home Depot, okay? and then as time goes on or as it makes more sense for you, you can add to your toolbox. I am not someone who particularly likes to spend money, so I often will try and figure out if there's any way I can do something without buying new tools, and there's often a way. I will link all my favorite products down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any additional questions, please let me know down below, and I will see you guys next time.